Coming up, three fires in Lowndes County cause alarm among citizens. And a local sanitation battle heads to the state Supreme Court. We'll have these stories and more. Your News Valdosta starts now. Welcome to News Valdosta. I'm Tichelle Williams. And I'm Hannah Hedges. Citizens of Valdosta became alarmed after three cases of arson occurred over the weekend. Police say the first fire was on the 600 block of East Adair Street when the news broke of a second fire on the same street. The third fire also happened on East Adair Street, but on the 700 block. Police Chief Brian Childress says the fires were only minor incidences and that there were no injuries. But police are also continuing their investigation into the possible arsons. Lowndes County sanitation companies, Advanced Disposal and Deep South Sanitation are headed to the state Supreme Court to fight for the rights to the county's garbage. The feud started when Lowndes County sued Deep South Sanitation for moving trash after the county commission signed a contract that stated the county would only work with advanced disposal. Commission Chairman Bill Slaughter said the county would save money by exclusively working with advanced disposal. The owner of Deep South Sanitation stated that the exclusive contract would put him out of business, when, which he was operating before the county signed the contract with the other company. A Putnam County woman has been found in a lake following a massive search. The search for 87-year-old Shirley Dermond began after her husband, 88-year-old Russell Dermond, was found slain in their home earlier this month. Investigators have confirmed that the body found in Lake Oconee last Friday was that of missing Shirley Dermond. Details released by investigators show that Shirley Derman died of blunt force trauma to the head. Authorities did not believe that the violence was random due to the community being gated and guarded by security. Anyone with information is asked to contact the Putnam County Sheriff's Office. According to the Lowndes County Sheriff's Office, Vadasta Middle School teacher Beverly Strong was arrested with charged with manufacturing methamphetamines. Due to citizens' complaints, the Lowndes County Sheriff's Office investigated the residence and found a quantity of methamphetamine along with ingredients and components. Strong was arrested and charged with possession of methamphetamines and possession of tools for the commission of a crime. Sheriff's Lieutenant Stride Jones said there was no implication that drug activity was conducted on campus. Civilian Michael Jones's motorcycle caught fire as he was driving along East Park Avenue Saturday afternoon. The reason behind the flames is still unknown. News Valdosta's Chandler D. Jackson has more. Still a bit unclear as to why this vehicle has combusted. Uh, officials are still working to go ahead and clean up the mess. A little bit of traffic has piled up, but they're moving that through and everything is going to get back to normal soon. Motorcyclist Michael Jones claims that his motorcycle began to overheat as he was driving down East Park Avenue. As soon as I walked away from the bike, they came over and asked me, you know, was I all right? And did I need any help or anything? Correspondents were on the scene within minutes once the civilian went ahead and contacted 911. Though the onset of the fire is still unknown, fire officials have done everything to safely extinguish the fire and make sure that the civilian was unharmed. I got strapped. I should be able to strap it down, but I can lay it down. Some tips to keep in mind for fire safety, stay away from oils and other hazardous flammable materials. Keep a fire extinguisher nearby if possible. And remember, if you're unaware of what to do, the first thing to do is call 911. With News Valdosta, I'm Chandler D. Jackson. 
Tomorrow is the last day to vote in the primaries. Lowndes County ended its advanced voting on Friday and reported 528 ballots were cast for the primary election. Nine of those ballot ballots were mailed in and the remaining 519 were made in person at the County of Board of Elections office. There were, there were a total of 3,258 ballots casted during the three week advanced voting period. Registered local citizens are encouraged to vote tomorrow from 7 a.m. through 7 p.m. For more information on polling locations, contact the Lowndes County Board of Elections office. When we come back, we'll tell you more about the news case of MERS that has hit the country. And a seminar is scheduled to benefit the health of women and babies in Lowndes County. Stay with us. Traditional light bulbs actually generate nine times more heat than light. Switch to Energy Star light bulbs, and you'll realize just how much cash you are really burning through. Saving energy saves you money. Learn more at energysavers.gov. Valdosta State University. Quality academics. Caring faculty mentors. A beautiful campus. Opportunities for involvement, leadership, and service. Championship athletics, spirit and pride. Discover your opportunities. Valdosta State University. Welcome back to News Valdosta. The deadly Middle East virus, MERS, has infected a third person in the United States. The deadly Middle East virus has affected a third person in the United States. The infected man from Indiana has not shown signs of the illness despite having tested positive for the disease. He traveled through Atlanta to Orlando and was hospitalized in Florida last week. MERS has no vaccine or treatment and is in the same family as severe acute respiratory syndrome. The CDC is continuing the, to investigate the cases to further prevention recommendations. The South Health District serves residences in 10 South Georgia counties. The Lowndes County Health Department will be hosting Dental Health Baby Lowndes Unique Victories, or LUV, seminar on May 20th at 4 p.m. The seminar is to educate pregnant and postpartum women on how to best take care of themselves and their babies. If you're interested in attending the seminar or would like more information, please contact the Lowndes County Health Department. Captains Guy and Monica Nickham have been stationed at the Valdosta Salvation Army post for five years, leading the Valdosta Salvation Army operations since June 2009. On June 15th, the Nickhams will leave Valdosta, having been assigned to the LaGrange Salvation Army. During their five years in Valdosta, they contributed to opening a new thrift store on North Ashley Street and streamlining the empty stocking fund toy distribution effort. The Lowndes County Animal Shelter reopened on March 14th. The shelter was shut down to be quarantined due to the adopted adoption of a dog with distemper. After the shelter found out about the distempered dog, it was closed for a week to test the other animals out and to make sure it was properly sanitized, ensuring that no other animals would get infected. Something fresh is happening in downtown Valdosta. News Valdosta reporter Camille Rawson has more with the story. Summer weather means good news for crops and the community. And on Saturdays, downtown Valdosta has a little bit of both. This month and throughout the summer, local farmers and vendors are coming together for Valdosta Farm Days, a downtown event dedicated to selling locally sourced produce, showcasing arts and crafts, and sharing some tasty homemade treats. Everything is homemade, basically. You know, you got a bunch of people over here selling jams and the sausage guy, and we sell breads. From 9 a.m. to 1 p.m., these vendors sell fresh fruits and veggies to locals and out-of-towners wanting to purchase something fresh and support the local market. So what makes going to the square to buy your produce different than buying it at the store? 
Farmers like Dan Cootie know firsthand how buying locally can help the community. You know what you're getting and where it comes from, and whereas a lot of the stuff you buy in the stores, some of it is coming out from out of the country, you're not, and the money's not supporting your local. Valdosta Farm Days is not only known for its local fruits and vegetables, but also for its assortment of beautiful flowers. Flowers, pottery, and natural soaps are some other things you might see on a Saturday in downtown Valdosta. One walk around the square and you might just end up with a handful of local groceries. Valdosta Farm Days will continue every first and third Saturday of the month. With News Valdosta, I'm Camille Ralston. The Valdosta Tango Society is a group dedicated to learning the art of the Argentine tango here in Valdosta. This May marks the Valdosta Tango Society one year anniversary, so be sure to keep an eye out for special events sponsored by the organization, such as their grand anniversary event at, at the Turner Center for the Arts on May 24th with special guest musicians Sonia Pozzetti and Damon Bol Bolotin. Admissions for this event is free. Up next on News Valdosta, we have seen blue skies and sunshine. Joy Cohn has the weather. Stay with us. When some people struggle with their mortgage payments, they become frozen, petrified, not knowing what to do, they do nothing. But the people who do something, the people who take action, are far more likely to get the most positive outcome. Making Home Affordable is a free government program. Call now to talk one-on-one -on -one with a housing expert about the options that are right for you. Real help, real answers, right now. Valdosta State University, encouraging. In-depth inquiry. Hands-on experience. Service and involvement. And a global view. While offering. A beautiful residential campus. Over 100 fields of study. Graduate and online degrees. And championship athletics all in a warm and friendly community. Get connected and involved. Do more, become more. Valdosta State University. Welcome back to News Valdosta. Now let's take a look at the weather with Joy Cohn. Joy, what's the forecast? Thanks, Hannah. I hope everyone enjoyed the nice sunny weather this weekend. I sure did. Today you should expect a nice sunny 82 degrees outside. Perfect weather for sundresses, cargo shorts, and maybe a swim at the pool. However, there is a 20% chance of rain. That could be a stray shower or thunderstorm later in the afternoon. Tonight, the temperature will drop to 62 degrees. So if you plan on taking a nightly stroll or enjoying downtown Valdosta, it won't hurt to take a light sweater with you. Tomorrow, the nice weather will continue with a high of 86 degrees and a low of 62 degrees. The UV index is 11, which is pretty extreme. So if you plan on engaging in any outdoor activities today, grab your sunglasses and sunblock to avoid sunburn. The pollen count is medium today. Not too bad, but if you have allergies or sinus conditions, make sure to take the required precautions for your health. Back to you ladies at the news desk. Up next on News Valdosta, Ashley Mooningham brings us the latest in sports. Stay with us.
Welcome back. Now let's check in with Ashley Mooneyhan for our local sports. Ashley? Thanks, Tichel. BSU Blazers win their softball match against the UAH Chargers at the Super Regional in Huntsville, Alabama this past weekend. This 6-3 win earns the Blazers their third consecutive trip to the NCAA National Tournament. Lowndes County High School finished their spring football practice with a scrimmage game at Martin Stadium this past Friday. The game was intense with the white and red team both forcing many turnovers and really challenging each other. The red team ultimately won the game 33-24. The Vikings have some cleaning up to do with minimizing the amount of turnovers but are looking forward to the 2014-2015 season. This past Saturday, Valdosta High School hosts their spring scrimmage game. Reporter Paula Owens has more on the story. Fans will get a chance to see what their Wildcats team has in store for this upcoming season. The Valdosta Wildcats hosted their annual spring scrimmage game today at the Baysmore Hyder Stadium. The defense definitely came ready to play, making a strong impact on the game. Though the black team's defense was superb, they did allow for one touchdown by the white team's running back. That was the only touchdown scored during the entire game. The rest of the scores came from field goal attempts by kicker Brennan Goodson. The white team won the game 16-0. The game was a long and tough battle as many turnovers were forced by the strong defense. The fans were on their feet as the teams faced off. The support was strong for the Wildcats and they can expect to see major improvements before the season begins. The Wildcats will continue to have practice this Monday and Tuesday. With News Valdosta, I'm Paula Owens. Why are so many Blazer football fans looking forward to the 2014-2015 NFL season? It's because some former Blazers could possibly hit the field under those big bright lights. After the 2014 NFL draft they took place, that took place on May 8th through the 10th, former Blazers standout stars Shontavious Jones, Lawrence Virgil, and Gerald Ford signed as free agents. Jones and Virgil joined the New Orleans Saints while Ford joins the Cleveland Browns. All around Valdosta are signs posted for the Leonard Hamilton basketball camp hosted by Florida State University. They are interested in children from ages 8 to 18 and with little skill needed. The camp not only aims to help improve campers' talents, but also develop other skills and meet new friends. Individuals or teams may register for the camp. More information about the sessions in June, including cost, housing, and travel, can be found on the Knowles basketball camp website. And that's the sports for today. Back to the ladies at the news desk. Thanks, Ashley. When we come back, we'll tell you more about how the community has come together to help a young man with a disability. And we'll tell you more about the contest, Who Wants to Be a DJ, that was held at the Valdosta Mall. So don't go away. We'll be right back. kitchen surfaces, utensils, and hands with soapy water. One in six Americans will get sick from food poisoning this year. Keep your family safer. Check your steps at foodsafety.gov. So, I just moved in with this family, and it's embarrassing. The little one, he likes to go outside and crawl around in the giant litter box. I don't know what he's doing. I mean, I was born, and I knew how to use the litter box. Look at that. That's disgusting. Oh, poop already! You're making me nervous! Oh, okay, I can't look at this anymore. I really hope he grows out of this, for his sake. Welcome back to News Valdosta. A young, a young Valdosta man needs help with a purchasing a handicap accessible van from the community. 
You may remember Brent Dixon, who was placed in the Guinness Book of World Records for collecting the most keychains when he was a teenager. 26-year-old Dixon was diagnosed with a spinal muscular atrophy when he was 13 months old. He is dependent on a wheelchair because he does not have the use of his legs. Victory Baptist Church will be hosting a fundraiser for Dixon tomorrow at 6.30 p.m. The event will include different activities like drawings and prizes for everyone to participate in. For more information on the event, call Ken Montgomery. Pastor David Rogers of Cross Point Church will start his journey in hopes to finding pockets of poverty, human trafficking, and much more to turn into a documentary. Along with a film crew and other members of the church, he will tour the United States with his friend Bill Hurley to find the unseen parts of America. Rogers and Hurley will be touring for two months on bikes while traveling from state to state. Black Crow Media will be getting a new radio personality soon. Reporter Stephanie Salone has more on the story. For the past few weeks, contestants of Who Wants to Be a DJ have been competing and going head to head with hopes of winning the competition. Black Crow Media hosted Who Wants to Be a DJ in the Varasta Mall. The contest is for contestants to show off their talents and prove to the judges that he or she has what it takes to be a DJ. Actually my idea a few years ago and what we were trying to do is take the luck out of the equation. For so many years it was all about who you knew as opposed to the actual talent involved. So we wanted to take the luck out of it. We wanted to actually give people an opportunity to show off their talent and show us they've got what it takes to uh, really be a DJ. There have been two big audition rounds where people competed on stage. Those chosen contestants have made it to the finals, which determines who is moving into the top five. Well, ever since I was a small child, I've been recording myself with uh, little handheld recorders, and I felt that this would be the most entertaining way to entertain myself and entertain others. I have a pretty bright personality. It sounded like a super exciting, awesome job, and there's not a lot of those in Valdosta. So um, I came out and did it. This would be a much better job opportunity for me, and my, we won, so. With the competition reaching the top five, it is up to the community to decide who will be the next radio personality. With News Valdosta, I'm Stephanie Salone. That's it for our program today. Thanks for watching News Valdosta. I'm Tashelle Williams. And I'm Hannah Hedges. We'll see you again tomorrow. 